Hello, welcome to another one of my Please listen to my feelings. I have no proof, but listen to my feelings <laughs> So this is another theory video. I don't know this video might be like everywhere because I didn't really have a plan I just have like random notes So if you haven't seen my first theory video on why I think Sashomaru raised his kid for the first four years of their life You should check it out. I actually really like that video. Today I'm gonna be talking about mainly literally episode 4 I'm gonna be covering in this essay about Kirin Maru is the main villain or is like the teacher guy, the original Kirin Maru's son. Matrikyo could be good or bad. And your dad, prequel in Yashahime. Hmm. The Shomaru's intention, Dream Butterfly, and Moroha and her parents. So a lot of random things because I don't know, I just want to talk about them, okay? Again, take everything in this video with a grain of salt. My theories could be. Stupid. My theories could not even be true, but theorizing is just fun anyway. So just just remember guys theories are just theories, you know, you know, you know <laughs> So first I just want to talk about a tweet I made the original series of Inuyasha was about Destiny and following your fate the red string of fate with like Inuyasha and Kagome But I think Yasha Hime is going to be contrasting that and it will be about Following your own path and making your own destiny and stuff like that I think it's really hinting that especially with Sashomaru's situation here because Sashomaru was all like Oh, I'm not gonna be the great dog demon. I'm just gonna like do my own thing and then Toa as well Toa kind of shows this because she doesn't fit in in the modern era she likes to do her own thing she hates the rules la 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 so I think it will be contrasting that especially since Shomaru is choosing happiness we'll get to that in a bit but happiness and then maybe Kirin the son is doing his own thing as well I just think the gist of Yajihime is gonna be about creating your own destiny and not having to follow Follow whatever fate is given to you. You can choose your own path, basically. Let's kind of analyze episode four for a second, mainly about like the whole talk with Trikyo and the girls, and then Trikyo with Sashomaru. So Trikyo is like saying how it's been like decades worth of time, 10 years. So is it possible that Rin wasn't put into that tree when the girls were born but is it possible that she was taken when that whole fire happened when the girls were four years old so that could be a thing that could be a thing that could be a thing so maybe Rin also raised the girls with Sashomaru for the first four years um, I have to see it I have to see it guys we have to see it and then we have Kirin Maru he is introduced as basically the guy who reigns over the east while Inudad did the west Trikyo says he is trying to twist time and return it to nothing but it's like why right because if you twist time and return it to nothing basically isn't that like kind of like suicide because Kirin Maru would be non-existent either unless he's trying to return it to nothing so he can rein everything from the beginning you know that could be a thing but she says he's a demon that reigned alongside Inudad so it's not really like they were enemies or anything he just did the east and then Inudad did the west so it's kind of like yin and yang and a whole balance type thing that was happening but then because Inudad passed away Sashomaru refused to take over his spot which led Kirimaru to take over and Trikyo says that the power to time travel is necessary to fight him and everyone's like well who is this Kirimaru guy and then everyone's like is he the teacher i personally think it's possible that they're the same person but i think that's too easy i feel like it's too easy for us to solve because the teacher's name is osamu kirin and basically the, the new guy is named kirin maru suffix maru maru usually is given to demons i believe but yeah the teacher's name is osamu kirin and i think i think he is affiliated with kirin maru but i don't think they're the same person because i just think it's too easy to solve and this could be really 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 a stretch but i think the teacher and trikyo are not evil i know i was sussing them out so bad in my reaction video but i don't think they're actually bad my reasoning for this is really stupid because okay so on the website of yashahime there is like a character list and on the character list it's like a bunch of like the good 
good characters, right? None of the bad characters are there. Like, Groothead is not there, Yotsume is not there, but the butterfly, Trikyo, and the teacher are there alongside other people. So I think that might be hinting that they're not bad characters. Like, I don't think they're the antagonist here. Um, maybe Kirimuru is, like, the actual guy. But we don't know. I don't know. But I just definitely think the teacher is not actually Kirimuru. Maybe the son of him. And... <laughs> <laughs> and Kininmuru is actually alive. I think he's alive. I don't know guys. I don't know I just think it's too easy for him to be the teacher But the reason why I initially thought that Kininmuru and the teacher are the same person because he is a English teacher And the east of Japan is basically North America So it's like English and someone in the comments actually pointed this out to me But in the second episode the teacher first says to Toa when in Rome do as the Romans do when you're in a unfamiliar place you should should behave like the people there. That's kind of like foreshadowing in a way. I think that's how we're going to find out that the teacher is actually a demon. People are like, oh, there's no demons in the modern era, la la la. I think he, he probably time traveled somehow and that's how he got there. Maybe the real Kirinmaru is looking for his son. I don't know, that could be a plot point. Um, but I definitely think that the teacher is not him exactly i just think that was too easy and then also in episode four toa with the english teacher said um in her like little internal monologue during english class she's like but learning english probably won't be that useful in feudal japan but maybe it will be useful when communicating with kirin maru Anyways, back to the Trikyo conversation. So after Satsuna refuses, Trikyo is like, I was right to place confidence in you. So it's like, was Trikyo testing them? And then she explains that Sashomaru can't defeat Kininmaru and that they walk in the same path. And if you defeat Kininmaru, Sashomaru will emerge and vice versa, but you must defeat them at the same time. And it's not to defeat Sashomaru in failure, but to defeat those who have taken the wrong path and it's like what does the wrong path mean here is it like the wrong path as an evil or is it the wrong path as in not following fate if we're going to continue on with the whole fate theme in the show is it that because Sashomaru refused to take over any dad's place and then do his own thing whatever he was planning to do is that the wrong path does that mean what if Kirin Maru isn't bad and then Trikyo here is bad what if Kirin Maru was actually also trying to do his own thing not really wanting to rule the east or his son or whatever and then Trikyo is here to keep them in their place and to restore the balance to keep the balance or whatever that could be like a thing but at the same time I also think that Trikyo isn't evil because it looks like she was working with Toshomaru and like in a writer's perspective I guess I think it would be kind of wrong for the creators to even though it's not really Kikyo to villainize her again in this way I just think it's kind of wrong too so I don't think Trikyo is bad even though they're not the same person because although Trikyo is not Kikyo in any way just visually it kind of seems like Trikyo kind of also took on her personality and like her character as well because Kikyo was always kind of testing and watching people she might seem kind of mean at the beginning but then like afterwards like she was doing things like low-key for the best like I don't freaking know like what if they're kind of adapting Kikyo's character with this tree as well and kind of making us want to suss her out but like she's actually not saying she's actually helping because here she said after Satsuna refused she said I was right to place confidence in you and then after well mainly mostly Toa and Satsuna after they refused to kill Sushomaru and Kirinmaru Trikyo smiles and then she says very well fate is a continuously spinning wheel which means like fate can be changed blah 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 and then also when she's like with the tree at the end and she is with Sashomaru she says those girls have such fighting spirit like she keeps praising them right so it's just like is she I don't think she's actually bad and I think the only reason why she awakened Rooted just so they can like you know exterminate Rooted as a whole I think they're trying to like villainize her in the beginning or the tree but I don't think she's actually bad what else was I supposed to talk about Wow. So yeah, any dad potential prequel within Yashihime. In one of my comments, someone said that it's predicted that any dad is going to be in Yashihime because after analyzing the little behind the scenes stuff that the creators posted on Twitter of the scripts for Yashihime, 
Saturday. Apparently, and your dad was in one of the pictures on the scripts or something like that. So people are like, oh, like we might see him again. And I definitely think we will, mainly because there's so much about him that we don't know. I mean, I would love to have a little prequel, but I think they're going to show in your dad's backstory in the show. Because when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about and your dad was so obsessed with showing Sashomaru about compassion, liking humans, la la la. And I was like wondering, I was like, why? Like, why is he so obsessed? Like, yeah, I get that, like, you're your dad and you want your kids to, you know, be good people and stuff like that. But it's like, why was he so obsessed with that even after death, right? So I kind of thought maybe he was like Sashomaru in the past. Maybe in the past, maybe in your dad was like really cold hearted. That's why he was like ruling the West, like always having battles, enemies, hated humans, all that. And maybe Izayoi changed him to see like compassion and love with humans and stuff like that and like other people. So I think when Sashomaru like grew up and I think maybe Inu dad saw himself in Sashomaru and I think we might see a little bit of a backstory of that which I'm super excited about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So Shomaru's intentions, we don't know what he's thinking. Apparently there was a translation error in the show. So at the end of the show, when Trikyu was like, I suppose this is one path as well. Perhaps staying like this could be the best in the end. Apparently the word best was translated wrong and the word happier would have been a better translation for it. Yeah, I saw that on Reddit. If you guys want to read the whole post, I'll leave it down in the description below. So is it like, is it the best or is it like he chose this because it, he is happier this way. Okay, if Sashomaru did choose happiness over taking this place of Inu dad, I understand why. Because if he were to follow his dad in his footsteps, that would mean like countless wars, battles with people who's trying to take over the West. Like he would make a lot of enemies. And you know, that's not really safe if you're planning to have a family. And like, I also see Sashomaru not really wanting to take over Inu dad's place, especially after the final act because the Mado's Zangetsuha was given back to the t -t -t Sega and the Shomaru was left basically with nothing except for the Ten Sega from his father and he had to prove himself strong enough with his own strength and then that's when the box Sega was created and his arm grew back to show that he is strong enough as a, his own demon so I understand why he wouldn't want to take the place of his dad after you know basically surpassing his father I don't know like he I, I see himself as more like independent like he He's like, yeah, I'ma do my own thing. And also like the fact that he started a family is not safe. This is so everywhere because my head is actually hurting right now. But I really see Inu Dad seeing himself within Sashomaru. And I want to talk about the Butterfly of Dream demon. So on the website, the Butterfly of Dream character description is Butterflies in the dream world spirit. When it appears in the real world, it eats people's dreams and those who are eaten cannot sleep or dream for the rest of their lives. And it says it's affiliated is with Setsuna. I initially thought that Toa's memories might have been eaten as well, um, mainly because it seems like she has memory gas, but that could have just been like, just forgot. <laughs> I don't know, because like she can't remember why she let go of Setsuna's hand, why she couldn't smell her, she couldn't remember a lot of what happened. She can only remember her in the forest, the fire, and playing with Setsuna, her sister. And she can't really recall a lot of the events that happened or like anything before that. I really thought that she like lost her memories and I thought that maybe the butterfly demon stole her memories as well But it doesn't look like that because if a butterfly of dreams demon did eat Toa's memories as well She wouldn't be able to sleep, but she is able to sleep So yeah, and a lot of people are thinking that taking Tsutsuna's memories and stuff like that was Sashomaru's doing is which is kind of makes sense the final scene in the episode 4 But why though when you think about it, okay in the original show who else's memories was taken away? Kohaku, right? So Kohaku's memories was taken away from Naraku so Naraku could control him and because Kohaku saw something very traumatizing, right? In his life and having those memories back basically would destroy him until like towards the end um, he kind of accepted it and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think that if we're going to consider the reason why Kohaku's memories was taken and then consider Satsuna's memories taken by force that way, maybe 
maybe Sasuna witnessed something very traumatizing in her life and then Sashomaru took her memories away that would make sense like perhaps staying like this would be happier in the end or be the best in the end right is it for the best for the girls to not remember their past or I was thinking this might not also be the case because Trikyo told them about Sashomaru so it's just like contradicting my whole freaking theory just now Trikyo like why would she tell the girls about Sashomaru if it's for the best for them not to remember maybe that's why Trikyo said I was right to place confidence in you when Sasuna refused or when the girls refused refused to kill Sashomaru Trikyo was like very well fate is continuously sp a spinning wheel uh, I don't know I'm just I'm just spitting out my thoughts guys I really don't know like why is it best for the girls to remember or is it for the safety of Rin's life or the safety of the girl's life I'm just spilling out like my thoughts let me know if you can add on to it or if you guys have any other theories I would love I would love to know uh, I have a really bad headache right now it's like just coming to me but I would like to finish this little rant video and then lastly Moroha's parents so when the girls were going through the time tree tunnel Satuna was like oh is it a good idea for you to make this deal with Rooted? And then Moroha's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Toa is like, it's bad. You need to keep your promises. Lies are bad. And Moroha was like, it wasn't a lie. It was a means to an end, which is something done to produce a desired result. I might be overanalyzing that scene, but it kind of seemed like it was really emphasized to me. I don't know why. But like, it could either just show Moroha's laid back personality, how she's just like, oh, whatever. You know, like whatever happens, happens personality or or it could be something like she thinks that lies are okay as in what if Inuyasha and Kagome left Satsuna with the bounty shop so the woman and Jubei what if they promised to come back but then they didn't for some reason dude that would be so sad that's why Moroha doesn't think lies are that bad like there are loopholes with lies because technically Inukag didn't lie they didn't lie yet because they have yet to come back it's not that they didn't come back they have yet to come back but i don't know maybe i'm overanalyzing that but i don't know guys my brain but yeah Th that's kind of like my little brain dump for today i'm sorry if this was kind of everywhere my head is hurting really bad right now i don't know why i'll just let editor angela take over if i miss anything i would like to say thank you guys so much for enjoying the reaction videos and the thesis the little and the theory videos and stuff like that i would like to do more hopefully when i feel not this terrible right now i feel so ugh right now i hope you guys enjoyed let me know in the comments your theories because my theory is everywhere and if you have anything to add on to my theories i would love to know just comment them all down in the comment section everyone be nice to each other theories are just theories remember like who cares man if someone's theory is crazy like whatever <laughs> but yeah and I'll see you guys on Monday with a new reaction video. Yeah, bye bye!